Who boy, I don't know about you, but the first month of 2020 just flew by for me. That means I have to sit down and do taxes. But before I do that, let's look at the questions that $5 supporters asked this month. Josh Havens asks, Is it possible that robots would eventually enslave or kill off humanity? Well, anything's possible, but I really doubt it. We just aren't making the kind of generalized AI that would be needed for that to happen. In fact, that kind of AI might not even be possible with classical computers. Quantum computers might change things, but even if they do, I just don't see it happening. And even if someone did make an AI that wanted to take over humanity, that would mean a ton of people would be incentivized to make an AI that could defend us from such an AI. Ali Adib asks, do you think charter schools will be corrupted by government funding the way for-profit colleges seem to be? I'm not sure that's the problem, but charter schools and for-profit colleges seem to have all the same incentives. Well, the difference with charter schools is that was the deal from day one, so they were set up with this in mind. That's not the case with private colleges that were privately funded for a while, then government started giving them funding, and later on the strings started being attached as they became more and more dependent on them. A lot of people are worried that that might be the case with vouchers as opposed to educational tax credits, giving poorer kids the option of going to a private school. And the fear is after the private schools are made more dependent on the vouchers, the government might start attaching strings to them the way they are with private colleges. The problem with charter schools is really the fight to get their fair cut. They're supposed to get the same per pupil spending that the government schools get, but it seldom works out that way. For example, recently the county I lived in passed a half cent sales tax to go to education. Even if it does, and it's much more likely to be a cookie jar for the commissioners, but do you think they'll be giving the charter school any of that? Of course not! They generally don't get bond money, special ed money, athletic spending, or any of the other extras. Even ignoring all of that, according to the John Locke Foundation, for the 2018-19 school year, per pupil spending in North Carolina was $9,865, and if you include the $750 per student capital expenses, that comes to $10,615. The charter schools only got $9,398. And they still had superior results to their government school counterparts. And finally, Thomas Urbanski asks, What are your thoughts on Liberland? Do you think it will be feasible to live there in the next 10 years or so? I really have my doubts. To let everyone know, Liberland is an attempt to set up a free state in an area of land between Serbia and Croatia that isn't claimed by either country. But it's more complicated than that. According to a treaty that dates back to 1699, the border between Serbia and Croatia is the Danube River. The problem is, rivers change their location over time. They can drift laterally and, more important to this case, they can cut off meanderings and make the river shorter. So the current flow of the Danube is different to what it was in 1699. According to Croatia, the border should be considered to be where the Danube was flowing at the time. Serbia says it should be at the current flow of the Danube. Since most of the disputed territory is east of the Danube, Croatia's claim would give their country more land, and vice versa, since that's where most of the river flow was cut off. There were a couple of tiny places to the west, though, and so by each country's claim, neither one of them has those areas. Liberland is being claimed as the largest of these areas. But it's not as simple as neither country claiming it. This is part of a larger border dispute, and would be claimed by one country or the other as a result of whatever the new agreement is. If Croatia wins and they gain the disputed areas east of the Danube, then Serbia will get Liberland. If Serbia wins, Croatia will lose out on the bulk of the disputed territory, but at least they could gain Liberland back. In both cases, whichever country loses these larger disputed areas will get back Liberland and it'll at least be something of a consolation. Now, you could say, with a lot of justification, that after a certain amount of time has passed, that land should be up for grabs. The legal term for this is terra nullius. Basically, nothing has happened with this dispute since 1948, but according to experts in international law, the land can only be claimed by either Serbia or Croatia. In fact, the only other country, which probably isn't even a country itself, depending on who you ask, but the only other country to support the existence of Liberland is Somaliland. But although a lot of political parties and independent groups all over the world have said they should let Liberland have this piece of land, which after all is just 2.7 square miles, this experience has made it clear. 
Once a state owns a piece of land, it can never be said to have abandoned it or reverted to terra nullius. Everywhere on the planet will always be a part of a government. They are not going to allow any free states to form. So we'll have to think of something else. Well, that wraps it up for January. If you'd like to ask a question for February, just do so at the links provided. Please hit like and subscribe and share this video everywhere to help make up for YouTube shadow banning. Also, YouTube tends to demonetize videos like this, so if you don't see an ad, how about making a small contribution? You can do so at donate.bogosity.tv using PayPal or crypto, or becoming a regular supporter at Patreon or Subscribestar, or watch my videos on bittube.tv, which is always monetized and never censored. Until next time, stay strong and be free.